Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Hindsight, where we see bad situations that can be avoided by good reasoning. But sometimes a situation is unavoidable and self-defense is needed to get you to safety. Welcome to another exciting episode of Hindsight. Uh, I'm Beat Physicist here with Mr. Suave and Sensei Buddha, a.k.a. the Buddha Meister. All right. How you guys doing? Feeling good. Good, AKA, AKA Luke Cage's biggest fan, Buddha Meister. <laughs> oh, flash uh, all day, sir. The flash. Okay. Listen, this, this is just an ongoing uh, riff raff between me and Sensei Buddha from Marvel and DC shows. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. All, yeah. all in good taste. All in good taste. So whether you like Luke Cage or you like The Flash, you know, you got two, you got either side you could choose and beat physicists are just wavering in the middle. And so you, you guys can pick sides and yet while we waver, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we, are, we are good. We are good. We are good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, put something in the comments about who you like, even if it's Jessica Jones or Iron Fist. There you go. Mm-hmm. J- Jones Green Arrow. Arrow. <laughs> Green Arrow's the man. Okay. Green Arrow, Daredevil. Daredevil superb. Excellent. He's the man. Cyborg? Teen Titans? I don't know. Whatever you want. Teen Titans. One day, are. One, one day, one day we're going to do a podcast about, about that and go and talk about their uh, martial arts backgrounds and some stuff like that. that that'd be good yes. for some of our listeners, too. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. But B Physicist, as I, as I always on point moderator, he's about to go in with the details of our upcoming episode. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this uh, Good Samaritan in Golf Manor, Ohio. So what we had here is uh, a Good Samaritan by the name of Nazir Elahi. Uh, so but what he basically did was thwarted a kidnapper of an 11-year-old girl. Now, this attempted kidnapping happened right across the street from a police station, no less. So the alleged kidnapper, Jesse Woodard Jr., 37 years of age, uh, you know, abducted the 11-year-old girl while uh, Elihi um, was was in the vicinity. So Elihi observes uh, uh, Woodard and the 11-year-old girl walking by. Um, she didn't uh, make any sound, but it just looked... Like a, like a struggle. So the girl uh, mouthed, she didn't say anything, but she mouthed, help me, several times. So when Elihi saw that, you know, he sprang into action and immediately confronted uh, Woodard, asking him, hey, you know, asking actually the girl, you know, do you know this gentleman? Uh, she said no. And then he, then he asked Woodard if, if he knew the girl. He said, no, but I'm taking her home. Woodard then, you know, tried to flee. uh, But Elihi then called the police and followed him to uh, this uh, food mart. And, you know, the police arrived shortly after, arrested the guy, Woodard. And now Woodard is charged with kidnapping. So, you know, here we, you know have a a situation where i mean in this day and age yeah folks it's like that you could get kidnapped right across the street from a police station suave what say you Mm, man so (laughs) oh this red bastard oh man i'm gonna say this is the red bastard mr woodside you are the red bastard of the week mr nazir alahi you get the thumbs up of the week, brother. Love what you did. Stepped in. Ohio usually gets a bad rap. You, you did you did your thing and get a good positive to what was people. People always look at a, a good uh, place of a bad negative. Now, I always like to say, as every podcast starts, and we about to go in with our views and opinions. These are uh, views and talks and discussions are for entertainment purposes only. And these are our views and our views alone. So if you're in your feelings, we don't give a damn. But still, listen. So you control us. 
<laughs> Let's go. So, <laughs> so I mean, I, I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna give some. Um, I'm looking at the the quality of the video from um, the precinct. And it was, uh, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt that it looked like it was um, maybe one of the towns, a smaller precinct. So it wasn't like, a, like let's say, the NYB, NYPD got a big, massive precincts all over uh, in Orlando. You got the main OPD building or the main Sheriff's County building, you know, in and, and, uh, different states like that, Washington, Virginia, um, Atlanta, you know, you got your main, you got your main, you got your main big PDs that have all the most of up-to-date technology and things like that and you have your smaller little um precincts little and the little podunk towns and things like that so this looks like it might be one of those less fortunate or off branches of of the city of ohio you know or could have been of the town pd or what, whatever it may be i'm thinking that might be why the quality of the video right across from the police station is so horrible you just see you kind of just see a jumble so you can't really tell who the victim is, who the alleged uh, uh, kidnapper is, and who the hero, alleged hero is. So it's, it kind of kind of makes it hard. And of course, they didn't release the, the young lady's name because she is a minor, so protect her people's safe face. You know, that's that's a good. They kept the, they kept the name in the silence. So, um, but what is great here is you know you got not Mr. Nazir Elahi. He um. He saw something, and instead of being a world star voyeurism of this generation, wanting to pull out the phone and just record it and say, "Oh, world star, I look at the little girl getting dragged away by her waist." No, he he didn't do that. He did what he was supposed to do. Like the like one news reporter asked him, "You're not bulletproof. You can't fly." No, he's not. We you know he no he did. He's a man. He's a person who saw a bad situation. To a person who doesn't have all the a minor who doesn't have all these uh, life experiences and all the knowledge and sense of how to you know, handle this, and he stepped in and took guardianship of that person for that time being, so he could get the proper authorities to intervene. Mm. So he did. He did. He did. He did the damn thing. Could he have hit him? Oh, of course. But most <laughs> people who saw that, they would have blacked out. Oh, of course. <laughs> Because if, if you if you if you ever you know you listen to our previous shows, especially the last one we talked about episode uh, our last episode, and you see how Swabi kind of went in a little bit on people who are uh, preying on children because they want that power. But children can't speak much. Children at this age that can become men- mentally shut down for the rest of their lives, come in a whole other mental state. You know, it, you know they and they just want to be the cause of that. They want to be the part of that. And they they're so messed up in their head. They might have been harassed or something like that in their childhood when they were younger. So now they just want to inflict that same damaging uh, trend pattern that happened to them to somebody else. You know, so that's that's what this dude Woodside is doing. So he, you know, he just ran up. I'm saying this dude was bold as fuck. He just ran up right across from the police station in broad daylight. I don't give a damn. I'm going to grab little little girl. I don't care how old you are by the way. So you coming with me. And this is a grown man. And this is a little girl. So even if she resisted, just by off of, off of physics, his, he's stronger than us, so he's going to take her. He's going to take her away. He's just going to take her away. Now, as as far as um, I, I know, I want I want to take Sensei Buddha's take on this, and um, I, I want to look a little more into this since these you know these occurrences are happening more and more from the from the one where the dude try to get the girl in the bathroom. You know, to this and you know just just all all type of nonsense um i want you know there are, there are some type of self defense we can start teaching our kids you know not, not just disciplines but actual self defense in situations like this so they could try to defend themselves you know you know she might not be the strongest or even if it was a boy there's a little boy getting kidnapped too they might not be the strongest or the most powerful but a good place hook uh leg thrust so the groin, that might free you up for those precious moments. You could yell, get help. You know, he grabbed you. You might be so scared, and like she was when she was walking by, uh, Mr. Alahi. You know, she was kind of whispering silently, but she was she was she was scared. She didn't know she you know at least she did something. Had she not looked at him, even though he saw it was looking funny, 
you know, he would have got away with it, took it to God knows where, and he would have did God knows what, and she she could have been another lost soul in Ohio, or another victim in Ohio. But she, you know, thank goodness, she, you know, what an upbringing she did have, she had enough sense to, you know, this ain't right, but she she is stuck. She was stuck in that frozen. She was frozen. She was stuck in that moment. And the dude, once he intervened, you know, that, that moment of, uh, of past went away because now she saw a light. And now she had an opportunity and she took it. You know, so I, I think she was taught right as far as speaking because, yeah, he was going to overpower her no matter what. Some self-defense courses might have been able to help her kick to the grind. You know, just just constantly not complying with the person, no matter what they say, is just a red flag for anybody watching. Because I know, you know, they, you know you, you've seen some uh, YouTube videos of it, and it's true. When it comes to uh, a little child or female being uh, verbally assaulted or assaulted or grabbed, people are going to intervene. Now, when it comes to uh, a man, they're more likely to laugh at it. You know what I'm saying? So this situation... As long as this child is fighting, people is gonna watch. People are gonna notice, and I'm glad they intervened. And I, you know, I give like I said, Mr. Lahey, he he don't know what the situation was. The dude could have pulled out the gun if he had one or or knife. He could have, he, you know, he he did put himself in harm's way. But you know what? He he looked past his safety to look for the safety of a child who still has a long future ahead of him. So I, I just like what he did. I think the precinct needed man. You need to upgrade your video camera game. Y'all need to y'all need to. I know there's not always someone on call outside, but you got somebody mon- monitoring the comms. How'd you miss something like that? I know why you missed it, because the quality was full of, full of shit. That's why you missed it, because you couldn't tell what you were looking at. Mm. That's the, and that's mm. the, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I can't even say, you know, officers shouldn't be patrolling around it, you know, cause, you know, that's depending on budgeting, that's neither here or there. Well, why not? We don't you know, know. Somebody, that's old school but, right, policing, but, walk the beat. That's old, school, mm-hmm. that's old school policing, but who knows if somebody just walk, was walking around the building and just went in, you know, so that, you know, they, I'm, I'm, not, I'm giving them leeway because we, we don't really know the, you know, the economics of that situation, in that environment, and how the police departments are being funded and stuff like that, which is, unfortunately, that's a sad case of what happens <clears> in a lot of communities of, if you have enough law enforcement and how we're being trained. For the community, so that's that's that. But you know, I like I like that. I just I just love the fact that you know my man stepped up when he asked him. Little girl finally spoke. She spoke up. She said no. This dude like a dirt bag, rat bastard. He said no. I don't know, but I'm taking it anyway. You know, off of instinct. You know, we're not condoning this. Like I say, what we say is our views alone. Don't go don't go saying that the hindsight told you you could throw some hands and get your ass whipped. You know, because I'm gonna laugh at you because when you tell you to do that. <laughs> I ain't tell you to do that, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I'm just saying, me, Sensei Buddha, our brother, be physicist. If we saw that and dude said no, I might, I might have gave him a, a, a old uh, Rick James bitch kick to the chest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I might have grabbed his wrist and yanked it, rotated it, put him, put a face right to the floor. Maybe, maybe went through with the full motion and snapped it. I don't know. I would, I would, I would have made sure his hands removed his little rubby rat bastard hands off that child. That's that's the main thing. I, the main thing I would have done. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it go it goes so you would have been justified in court, but you know this legal system so messed up nowadays. You know, you might have you might have been charged with assault, even though you saved this little girl life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. I've heard I've heard worse stories, but anyway, you know, it's just you see something like that. As corny as it sounds, I know. Uh, the DHS does it all the time. See something, say something, campaign in the airports. You know, the soft targets like that. You see something suspicious, say something. In this situation, you see something that ain't right in your neighborhood, say something. In a vein. You know, he, like I said, he didn't, he didn't take that, he did take that step of um, being confrontational, but that also, and chasing the guy or following him to a place, but that was able to give law enforcement enough time to do what they need to do and go apprehend him. And now he's in custody. And he's going to he's gonna get his day in court. And that's what that rat bastard deserves. And once he goes in, he's going to have a new cage looking some of my bitch take it down on him. You know, you know that's, that's, the, that's just some of my uh, bad justice, the bad juju justice that I think he deserves. He wants to do, I, you know, I'm, I like the, the old school thinking of Cold Hammurabi, uh, an eye for an eye. 
You know, you wanna you wanna you wanna do something like this, something like this need to happen to you. So you know, that's you know, that's just that's just how I feel so at times. Depending on the crime, that's how I feel at times. Sensei Buddha, what say you, sir? I completely agree with you. As long um, as everything is completely justified, like here, we know that Mr. Woodard definitely abducted the 11 year old girl. Mr. Allahi not only pursued the gentleman and pinned him up over at the Z food market, but you know, he's uh, himself also being a witness to this. The thing that's striking me here is how was, you know, where was this little girl coming from? Was she going to the store? Was she coming from school, an after-school program, soccer mm. practice, piano practice? In other words, what enabled Woodard to feel that he could pursue this girl? Did he was he stalking her? Did he was he stalking her all day? Or did he just come up on a whim and just grab her? And here, as um Mr. Suave had implied, he's 100 percent right. At 11 years old, she should have had self-defense, but also because we're talking about children now, we now are talking about guardians. You now need people to walk your children to and from school. What's happening in the Washington, D.C. area is a very, very sad thing. As you know, a lot of young ladies, particularly women of color, Black girls, are missing at an alarming rate. And our children can't be left alone. And one of the things that that little girl should have done immediately was shout out, you're not my mommy, you're not my daddy, whoever is the person who they know. So that it draws attention and people say, hey, man, what are you doing with this kid? She's saying you're not her daddy. You're not her mommy. I don't know you. And they need to know basic wrist twist escapes to work against the thumb and things like that. And just like Mr. Suave had said, to use a low line kick or a, a punch or a kick to the groin and run like crazy. If this happened in a school situation, I really hope that her school where she's at, they can revamp things and say, look, the little kids cannot go unless they're getting onto a school bus with the proper designated driver, or that when the parents come to pick the children up, it is agreed, and then the little kids go to their parents, and everybody, it's, it's an understanding, and it's a proper handoff. But my whole thing is, like, what enabled Woodard to do what it was that he did? And the little girl, she needs to be trained, obviously, in self-defense. Not only self-defense, but to be aware and say, hey, this person is coming quickly upon me. Let me go. Or if he came from behind her and started grabbing her by her wrist, she can then work a wrist reverse and start to, you know, cry out. You're not my mommy. You're not my daddy. Thank goodness for Mr. Alahi that he looked at the situation and then look, happened to look at the little girl's mouth to see her say, help me, help me several times without any words. Mr. Suave, you're 100% right. She was really, really scared. And, um, you know... Uh, again, man, it is to a point that you have to escort your children everywhere. There is not one piece of the United States where you can say, you know what? My child is going to be a million percent safe. You got to escort them to the school. And if your child is going to have after school programs, you got to tell your kids, look, if you get a break, like let's say an after school program may start 30 minutes to an hour. After school, that's out at three o'clock. You got to coach your children to say, no, don't go to the candy store because you could have some lunatic pedophile. And I just saw a video that was set up by uh, Mr. Hassan Campbell. We're going to deal with this. This is about um, pedophilia, particularly uh, boy pedophilia. This one gentleman who was a, who was a pedophile he said that when he looked across the street and saw all these kids in the school, he said it was like Moses going to the mountain. In other words, he was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, yeah, we're we're dealing. Yeah, we're going to do that story. We're, we're going to do it. That's going to be in a in a very near future episode. But just a couple of things that we do want to give out here 
to our li- to our listeners, we want to go with this particular website, www.missingkids.com, and that's M I S S I N G K I D S dot com forward slash hotline, and it's one eight hundred the lost or one eight hundred eight four three five six seven eight. Again, this is www.missingkids.com, and that's M-I-S-S-I-N-G-K-I-D-S.com forward slash hotline, and the number is 1-800-THE-LOST, and that's 800-843-5678. And also, Black and Missing uh, Foundation. And it's www.bl, uh, well, www.blackandmissinginc.com forward slash hotline. And they're located in Landover Hills, Maryland, area code 20784. And their number is 1-877-972-2634. Again, that's 1-877-972-2634. That's the Black and Missing Foundation. These are child abduction hotlines that everyone should be familiar with. And please visit their sites. I like to visit their sites and see updates. Um you know, on how to deal with situations of people who, of course, are now missing. A lot of times with Black and Missing Foundation, some a lot of these kids are returned. And they even, it, it's just amazing because um, you even have grown adults, people as old as 50 getting abducted. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. So, so yeah, we got to, it's not just, it's not just about also the kids, but you, you this is going to force people to deal with each other. We're very fortunate that Mr. Elahi was involved in this because a lot of times, you know, we get a little numb as society. That ain't my kid. Or that ain't my situation. Oh, that kid. You, I mean, I mean, we just very sour thoughts in the mind. And I'm not saying that this is everybody. But, you know, it was it was a divine intervention on the part of Mr. Elahi mm-hmm. of being there to stop this. And it happened across the street from a precinct. And again, I agree with Mr. Suave. And unfortunately, you have situations where these police departments are not funded. I'm going to give a good, I'm going to put a good feel good vibe out there saying, hey, that these cops do care about the community. But now we're going to have to look into that. But parents, you got to watch your children. And if the parents can't do it, you need trusted people in the neighborhood that you know that can come and pick the children up, carpool, walk to school, and bring them back. I really would like to know the situation. Was she going to the store? Was this a situation where she was in an after-school program? How did Mr. Woodard feel so emboldened to snatch her up in broad daylight and just like you know, Mr. <clears throat> Suave pointed out before, when we had the uh, the young girl, where the guy was so brazen with it, he was waiting, laying in wait in a bathroom to snatch her. And more concerned staff, they came and they leaped into action, brother. That's the way it should be. But as far as self-defense, thank goodness Mr. Allahi was there to do it. That little girl, she needs more awareness. And she, yes, she does need self-defense. How to break free from a grab, what kind of key code words to say, you're not my mommy, you're not my daddy, I don't know you, why are you touching me? Whatever it takes, so it draws attention from adults. And then of course, awareness that if she sees this person coming to her, she can run. Run or walk or go to somebody and say, hey, look, I don't know this person. But she must have been very, she must have been in a very alone or precarious situation where this man could just walk up and grab her and start taking her with him. And that's a big problem to me. So uh, that's my little piece. Yeah. I think um, 
you hit a, a point here about, you know, her being alone. I think what a lot of parents need to realize now is that the world is changing. And, you know, American society is all, all, also changing. And that long gone are the days where children should be walking home by themselves from school. They need to be with a friend. They need to be with a group of friends and, you know, walking each other home or what have you. Because, um, I mean, the, where I'm, the area where I live, you know, they don't let the kid leave until uh, a proper guardian picks them up. And then if, <clears throat> if the parent can't pick them up, then they have to leave and the parent has to leave a name of someone that's uh, charged with picking them up. And then that person, when they come, must provide ID that they are indeed that person that's supposed to pick them up. So there's a lot of strategies that these schools are applying now to, you know, make these kids safe because, you know, <clears throat> they're, you know, this, you have these situations where the, the kids are, are getting abducted en route to their home. So now you have to keep an eye on your kid. Um, you know, they, they shouldn't be out there, you know, unsupervised. And, not, you know, I remember when I was going to school. Oh, boy, I don't want to sound too old. But, oh, you're dating yourself, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, at the age of six years old and seven years old, I was walking to school by myself. And I'm thinking back now, like, wow. Like, I could have, you know, six years old. I mean, you, I can yell, I can scream, whatever. But, you know, if somebody wanted to abduct me by force, it, it was definitely possible. But, you know... Now, you know, the, the I, I couldn't imagine letting my child walk to school by themselves at the age of six years or seven years old, you know, in present time. Mm. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Me, physicist, I completely agree with that. And thank you for that, you know, for that uh, thoughtful commentary there. You're 100% right. 100% right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, again, you know, it's not that we're old, or maybe it is that we are, but, you know, those the, the, those days are gone. Your kids shouldn't be walking to school by themselves or coming home by themselves. They need to be, there needs to be, uh, you need to keep tabs on, uh, at, at, on them at every step of the way, from going to school to the extracurricular activities, and then back home. They must be account. Every hour must be accounted for during the day of your children. And yeah, that's my piece. All right. Yes. So yeah, I think that about wraps it up, folks. Um, you know, again, the name of the show is Hindsight. You can find us on Twitter at the Hindsight. That's at T H E H Y N D E S I T E. You can Google us. We're coming up in the searches now. Uh, we've got an Instagram page. Um, I think might be updated. <laughs> Mr. Suave, what's going on with that? <laughs> working on that. Working on that. Brother. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, we've got a blog, um, of course. Um, We've got a YouTube channel, The Hindsight. Uh, you know, we've got martial arts demonstrations uh, happening. We're uploading content every week. So, yeah, give us a, you know, give us a chance. Look at us. You know, look at, look at the content. Leave some comments. Subscribe if you like it. And, you know, we want to hear from you. So, the email... Again, you don't know by now. Thehindsight at gmail.com. So you can you know, get in touch with us. We'll respond. Yeah. Leave a comment in the YouTube videos. We'll respond. So that's T-H-E-H-Y-N-D-E-S-I-T-E at gmail.com. And uh, that about wraps it up, folks. So see you next time. Peace. Peace.